let's have a look at who our next speaker is. And it's me again. So all the defaults are backwards. As I say, this is actually connected to my previous talk. So we'll, we'll get to see why in just a moment. So all the defaults are backwards. And you probably recognize this expression when talking about C++. We're always uh, hearing this. But what do we really mean by it? And how can we fix it? Well, to illustrate the point, let's consider a simple class. Just has a, a member variable, it's an integer in this case, doesn't matter too much. Um, and imagine you want to add an accessor for it. So we just write a public member function, uh, just returning that integer. Pretty straightforward. I mean, this is basically C++ class building 101. Except we wouldn't generally write it quite like this. I mean, for a start, it's an accessor, it's just going to be reading the data. We're not going to be writing to it. So we should make that const. And yeah, that's fair enough. We will probably all do that. But you know, it's probably not going to throw any exceptions either. And maybe we want to just be sure of that. So we're going to make it no accept. And you know, if this class could be made const extra, we could probably make the member function const extra as well. I mean, it is pretty, pretty trivial after all. Or maybe. In this case, it's returning an integer, which is going to be trivially copyable, but maybe it's returning a more complex type. We may want to return that by reference just as an optimization in some cases, except of course, it's a const method. We don't want to mutate this thing, so we should make that a const reference. Oh, but now we've opened the door to, is it east const or, or west const? So yeah, which side do we put it? Do we even pick a side? We could do both. We can actually put the const keyword one side or the other. And yeah, some people don't like to actually take a side in this war. So they, they won't actually uh, you know, wear that on their sleeves. But yeah, let's pick a side. We'll go with const just to keep it simple. And I think you can see where this is going. We, we've got a lot of extra keywords in there. Uh, when really all we wanted to do is just concentrate on the fact that, yeah, this is a, a function called fun that returns an integer. All the rest, really, we just wanted that to be the default. We want that to be. Um, or opt out if, if necessary. We could also mix in what we talked about in my previous talk, the re trading return types. And if we do that, which you know I, I have argued, and maybe I've convinced some of you that that's a good thing, but let's just see if I've convinced you. But that's adding even more noise now. Now we've got even more keywords. So yeah, we really wanted to get back to, and again, if you accept trading return types, something like this and all the rest be the defaults that you can opt out of. Let's have a look at, again, other languages. Starting once again with Swift. We talked before, it's just got that funk keyword instead of auto, but otherwise looks very similar. F sharp, similar again, but with one character less. Definitely a fun language to work with that one. Same with Kotlin. Uh, also very similar, it's just got the colon instead of the arrow. JavaScript, a bit more verbose in this case. You have to spell out function, but there is a shortcut for that, of course. I think Rust has probably got the, the balance right yet again in this case. Got two characters for what we call the function introducer. So actually half the number of characters that we use in the C++ example. But I think we're getting a little bit off track here. We wanted to talk about defaults. We've gone back to uh, function introducers. Let's knock up a bit of a wish list. This is what we want. We want const by default. No accept by default, const extra by default. And yeah, I'll throw in training return types with a short introducer. Remember, Rust was just two characters. That was pretty good. And again, throw back to my previous talk. Consistency with, with Lambda syntax seems like a good thing. We like Lambdas, they're good. Ah, formidable wish list. Interestingly enough, we actually have this in the language today. It's called Lambda syntax. That actually gives us all of that. In fact, this, this is what it looks like for the same example, except there's a few shortcomings here. Mostly because although I've given that uh, the name fun there, that's not actually the name of the Lambda. That's the name of a variable that we assign the Lambda to. Lambdas are unnameable, sorry, un unnamed and unnameable except by the compiler, but nothing that we have access to, which is why we end up assigning them to variables if we want to pass them around. What if we changed that? If we could give a Lambda a name, we'd probably put it here after the, uh, uh, the capture list, but before the, the argument list, 
Looks very familiar, a bit like um, normal function syntax in that respect. We've got the training return type as well, of course. And in fact, it stacks up really well against those other languages we looked at, particularly Rust. Instead of FN, we've got the empty square brackets. That becomes our function introducer. We have to make a couple other changes as well, of course, allow them at namespace and, and class scope. But those just pretty small changes, really, we get everything on our wish list. And that's pretty good. I mean, you have to squint a bit, particularly around uh, context for a bit. Um, that, that is basically it. In fact, we can go further because if we're introducing what's effectively a new global function syntax, why stop there? Particularly that empty captures list. Yeah, it's empty because the global scope, you can't really capture anything. You don't need to because everything is already accessible to you that's global. Except what if we change that too? So that other globals are not accessible unless you explicitly capture them. And that would include other functions that themselves can refer to, to globals. That means that by default, a function with this syntax with an empty captures list is also pure or with a very familiar syntax. Think about it. Now, I'm glossing over a few problems, of course, things that we need to solve. That's never stopped us before. We might need to, uh, to work on that. But I know I'm not the only person to have ever thought of this. Um, I've still got to track down what the actual problems were that have stopped it before. But before this ever gets to a serious proposal, uh, if you think you know anymore, please do come and talk to me. You know where to find me. That is the end of my second lightning talk.